Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Double Dare, brought to us by Game Tech and Rare. Based on one of my favorite game shows from my youth, Double Dare is a relatively good version of a game show turned into a video game. It features a pretty good representation of the physical challenge games, as well as the obstacle course at the end of the game. And it also features a pretty good variety of different question types that you'll have to answer in order to get points so you can make it to that obstacle course at the end. Here we go with Double Dare for the NES. Since Rare helped work on the game, the soundtrack ends up being really good and actually decent to listen to. At the start of the game, you can play one or two players, as well as you can select the difficulty of the opponent, which will be selecting the hardest difficulty for our opponent. Then you get to enter your name. Afterwards, you then get to select which character avatar you want to select for yourself. For this run, I'll be probably picking the most goofy of the avatars, the weird Afro Kid with glasses. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a boy or a girl, and I really don't care. They then automatically give you a partner, which we get the rad 90s kid with the mohawk and sunglasses, and then our opponent fills in on the right. You then get to play one of the many challenge games, but the first one to win the game ends up being the first one to answer a question. Here we have a bowling game where you'll have to set the speed and angle in order to hit the bowling pins. First to hit all three wins. Select all the way on the fastest speed, and then select the angle that's going to work best in order to hit the far left, right, and middle pins. You have to do so really quickly, especially on the hardest difficulty, because the computer opponent pretty much doesn't miss. You then get to answer questions. We have our first question here, you then have three choices, and then dare at the bottom. Just like the game show, you can dare the other team to answer the question for double the points, they can then double dare you back for four times the amount, in which case you can then answer it for that amount, or take the physical challenge. In which case you must complete the physical challenge to get the points, or if you don't, the other team gets the points. For this run, I will try to get the computer to give me a couple physical challenges, so I can show a couple of the extra games. Overall though, for the knowledge that's needed for the game, Pretty much having a high school or college education, you'll have absolutely no problem getting most of these answers. The only ones that may give you trouble now, of course, are going to be pop culture questions that took place back in the day. Well, being an AMT, I know that the femur bone is located in the thigh, which gives me an extra 10 points, and I'm up to 50 so far. Is it just me, or does my avatar look like he has absolutely no teeth in his mouth every time he answers a question correctly? C'est la vie stands for B, that's life. Any fan of Discovery Channel's Shark Week should easily know the answer to that question. When you're dressed to the nines, you're definitely wearing fancy clothes, but I love the answer of wearing nine different chains. Okay, on this question, the answer is obviously Cratchit, but I'm going to dare the other opponent in order to see if they double dare me back so I can do a physical challenge. Sometimes the computer will do this instantly, or they will answer the question correctly and get those points. You're never sure which of the two they'll end up doing. Thankfully for us here, though, they end up picking double dare so we can get one of the physical challenges. The physical challenge we end up getting is Pie in the Pants. For this physical challenge, you end up hitting the button to launch a pie up into the air, in which case you then control the guy on the left in order to try to catch it in his pants. 
you must catch three of the pies in order to complete the challenge. While the hit detection can be a little bit off at times, this ends up being probably one of the easiest of the physical challenges to do. Once we complete it, we get the points, which is $40, and we move on to another $10 question. After about 11 questions or so, that'll be the end of the first round. You then go to the halftime show, in which case you come back and do another one of those versus games. In the second round, all the points are worth double, so the basic question's worth 20. For this minigame, we have Gorilla. You have to set the correct speed and angle in order to actually get the banana in the hand of the gorilla, which moves back and forth. In order to do this, you want to have direct middle speed, pretty much, and direct middle angle in order to just barely hit the hand and win the game. On the hardest difficulty, that one's really tough because you probably only have two or three chances to get the banana before the computer ends up getting it. The land of enchantment is known as New Mexico. I'm not sure exactly why they chose that name, but it's one of the nicknames for the state. Double Dare the Game Show has an actual pretty interesting history. It started off in 1986 in a studio game show in Philadelphia, and eventually was syndicated on Viacom Networks, eventually making it over to Nickelodeon. The syndicated episodes of the past seasons on Nickelodeon ended up being one of the better shows on the early network, and definitely put it on the map. In 1989, they would then shift over the taping down to Universal Studios, and eventually over to Nickelodeon Studios themselves. It ended up running for several seasons, and ended up changing a little bit, eventually becoming Family Double Dare, featuring families of teams facing each other. The show ended up running until 1993, eventually also being brought back shortly for Double Dare 2000 in 2000. It's also interesting to note that Ed Kalehoff actually worked on the theme song for Double Dare. He also worked on the very short-lived game show Double Dare, which has no relation, that took place in the 70s. Also, that show was hosted by famous game show host Alex Trebek. Here I try to get another dare going, but unfortunately the computer just let the time run out and not pick double dare. Interestingly enough, he was waiting to be put to sleep, which is a question I've had a few times in the game, it's the only way I actually knew the answer. The answer obviously is Star, but once again we're going to try to do a dare to see if we can get another physical challenge going. Thankfully, they double dared us back, and now we can take the physical challenge and complete another one. Here we have the Ring Toss game, which is pretty much just like the Pi game, except you actually have to set speed and angle here, so it's a little bit tougher. Set the speed and angle about halfway on both, and that'll pretty much give you a straight shot forward, in which case you can easily get the ring. Just like before, the hit detection can be off at times, so you may have to keep shooting a few times and practice the game before you're actually able to hit it.
I was really hoping the answer to that question was Smokey the Bear himself, because he always tells others not to start forest fires, yet you know he's starting them himself. The answer is Gulliver, as in Gulliver's Travels, not to be confused with the Jack Black movie of the same name which bombed terribly. Here we're going to do another dare to the computer to try to see if we can get another double dare and physical challenge going right before the end of the second round. Thankfully, the computer dared me back, so now I can do a physical challenge. This one is Putty Golf, which is probably one of the toughest of these games. You basically have to set the speed and angle in order to hit the ball upwards. Setting about halfway is pretty good, and then you have to set the speed and angle again in order to get it into the hole. For the game, I set the speed and angle at halfway first, and then once it's up on the platform, I then do full speed and angle at about halfway in order to shoot it straight and get it through the hole. At the end of the game, I beat the opponent 500 to nothing, and now I get to do the obstacle course. For the end of the game, you must run through an obstacle course, going through eight different obstacles in order to collect a flag. At the end of each obstacle, you grab the flag and pass it on to your partner. However many flags you grab and pass on is how many prizes you get at the end of the game. The eight obstacles are pretty much the same each and every time you play the game, except they will change orders. To move in it, you have to press left and right alternating really quickly in order to run. Then, you must keep pressing them in order to go through the obstacle itself. However, once you gain control of your person after the obstacle, you must control them normally, and then press A in order to jump up and grab the flag. You can then run down in order to press left and right again in order to keep running and pass it on to the next person. So for the most part, you're just going to be pressing left and right over and over again in order to keep moving on. On any of the ones that have a slope though, you'll have to keep mashing up in order to climb it, then take full control in order to actually grab the flag, and then slide down the opposite end, and then you can give the flag to the next person. It's a little bit confusing, so you'll have to keep mixing up the controls, which is probably the most difficult part of the obstacle course itself. You also have a pretty short time limit, which barely gives you enough time to get all the way through 8 obstacles. For the giant wheel, just keep pressing left and right over and over again, and you'll see the lights build up. When they reach the top, the flag ends up dropping down. Thankfully, during this one, you won't have to pass the flag, and it'll automatically go to the person. Run at the oil full force, and you'll slide mostly across the entire thing. Jump up, grab the flag, and we pass it off, and you can see I just barely give the flag off and complete the obstacle course with all eight prizes. You then get to see what eight prizes you won, and the total amount of money you won for the day. Every time you play the game, you get the same 8 prizes in the same order, so unfortunately that doesn't change up at all. After looking at the prizes though, it then goes to the credit screen. Overall, Double Dare ends up being a pretty good game show to NES translation. The game features an okay amount of variety as far as the games go, and the obstacle course at the end, while it could have been a lot better, isn't terrible for an NES version. After the credits finish up, it then goes back to the title screen for you to begin all over again. But with that, it's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.